What's up? What's up? Mm, what's up? Hey, back at you again, one more again. You know what I'm saying? With this follow the money. Because you got to follow the money with these people. And I'm going to expose a big player in this one. You know what I'm saying? That many people don't even know about. He ain't even probably even heard of, but he's a big time player over here. The U.S. Justice Department demand details on Glencore on intermediary firms. The U.S. Justice Department, Department of Justice, is seeking documents from Glencore about intermediary companies and that commodity firms will work within the Democratic Republic of Congo, Venezuela, and Nigeria. Sources familiar with the matter said. The investigation is not directed at Glencore's own activities or senior executive two sources toward recruiters and gave no further details about the type of information sought. The investigation focused on intermediaries, one source familiar with the probe said. A banker working with Glencore also said the focus was on three intermediary firms. The mining and other extractive industries, the intermediary are firms or individuals paid by fees by producers, buyers, or both for services such as brokering deals. Glencore said on July 3rd, it had been subpoenaed for documents relating for, to its business in three countries since 2007. Mm, it's 2018 now. Sending its shares down 30% and leaving investors guessing about the direction of the, of the investigation. The Switzerland-based firm has said a subpoena related to its compliance with the U.S. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act and the money laundering statutes, but did not indicate that ju the Justice Department was focused on intermediary or gave further details. Glencore was said on July 11th it will cooperate with the U.S. authorities after receiving the subpoena, declined to offer additional comment for this article. The Department of Justice declined comment. The second source that's familiar with the Nigerian element of the probe, but not in other areas, said the Department of Justice wanted Glencore to hand over documents related to associates of former Nigerian oil minister Danzali Allison Marduke, namely the orange owners of the Nigerian-based Atlantic Energy Holdings. The U.S. authorities are investigating the alleged robbery of the, of the former minister and alleged money laundering by her associates, including Oluwa Ande Mokohar, and Kolowa Kolion, according to U.S. court documents seen by recruiters. Glencore was a buyer of oil from Atlantic Energy and Brass Development, a subsidy of Atlantic Energy Holdings, which is owned by Morcore and a local. Glencore declined to comment on the oil dealings with Atlantic Energy, and a lawyer representing both the Atlantic Energy and Omocore also declined comment. The lawyers for Allison Mamadou requested recruiters send their question by email, but did not respond when the email when that email was sent. A lawyer for Alu cannot be identified as court documents did not name the representative and other lawyers involved in the case could not offer guidance. Nigerian government referred requests for the comment of this justice to this justice minister, who is also an attorney general. He did not respond for requests for comment. So nobody want to speak on this. For the Congo, the U.S. authorities were seeking documents from Glencore related to Israeli biz billionaire Dan Gertzler. Now, this is the guy we want you to we gonna focus on. You know what I'm saying? Write him down, Dan Gertzler. While for Venezuela, they wanted documents from Glencore relating to the Miami-based trading firm Helsinki Inc. Write that down too. Helsinki Inc. The first source and the banker said. The sources declined to disclose any more information about the probe to these two intermediaries. Glexer was a partner in Glencoe's Cobot and Copper Mines in the Congo until 2017. Could not be reached for comment. His spokesman in London declined to comment. The Congolese government spokesman Mamber, Lambert Mendy said Gexler had a business in Congo and that many of the investigations activities had nothing to do with the government. For Venezuela, Hanges, his group in Miami, that you know is backed up by him, acted as an intermediary for Glencoe fuel sales to the state energy firm DPVSA. According to DPVSA and internal documents seen by recruiters, Helsinki did not respond to the telephone or email request for comment about the Justice Department for Department of Justice probe. The spokesman for DPVSA did not immediately respond to the request for the comment. So everybody's being hush hush on this, you know. Now I want to show you who the guy is. You know what I'm saying? You gotta show who this guy is. I 
All right. A troll, this is the guy right here, Meet Dan Gessler, Israeli billionaire and diamond dealer. He's a billionaire. Can he probably well be on that? You know what I'm saying? The troll will leak financial documents known as the Paradise Paper have put Israeli businessman Dan Gessler in the spotlight, a position he usually avoids. That's the thing. When people got money, they ain't trying to be seen. They don't want to be no cameras near him. This is probably one of the few pictures you'll see of the cat. You know, with a yarmulke on. It's probably one of the few, few pictures you'll see of him. Gexler, who at the age of 43, has a net worth estimated at $1.2 billion, made his fortune from mining diamonds and other materials in Africa. According to the lead papers, Gexler received a previously disclosed loan for $45 million in 2009 from Glencore, which is one of the world's largest mining companies, which was originally founded by a Jewish businessman, Mark Rich. The purpose of the million dollar loan, multi million dollar loan, was to get Gexler to use his close ties with the government of the Department of Republic of Congo to secure mining rights from Glencore in the country. Gexler will pay the loan back only if he failed to get Glencore into the mining contract. The loan could raise questions of whether Glencore with Glexer violated anti corruption laws or used his relationship with DR President Joseph Kabele and other leaders. Glexer has denied any wrongdoing and said his lawyers said all the details were reportedly property and he does not receive any professional treatment from DRC. Here are a few things to know about Dan Gexler. He, number one, he grew up around diamonds. Gexler's grandfather, Moshe Schnitzer, was the founder and, and the first president of Israel's Diamond Exchange. So this go way back. You know what I'm saying? Way, way back. You know, you know his father, Asher Gresker, ran the family business which centered on the sale of cut diamonds. Dan Gregler learned the trade from both and later expanded his business into rough diamond as well as diamond mining. Number two, he took global business global. Without family funding, Gregson started his own diamond business when he was 22 years old. His real give back break came in the late 90s. Remember, Africa's at war in the late 90s. All these areas, you know, Sierra Leone, all them places like that, they at war during this time. He's getting down. Gregson started his own, let's see, let's see, his real break came in the late 1990s when Gregson forged a personal relationship with Joseph Kabila, the son of then DR president, Lauren Kabila. This relationship led to an exclusive diamond export contract award to Gunsler. Lauren Kameen was assassinated in 2001, but Gregson mangled it to renegotiate a deal with the son, his son, and successor, Joseph Gessler. Dan Gessler has since suspended his business in the DR, owning copper, cobalt, and tangible mines. His business in Africa has been scrutinized by International Wash Dodge Group. Gregson has been accused repeatedly of purchasing exclusive rights to, natural, to the natural resource of the, of the DRC. One of the world's poorest nations with a fraction of the actual worth raising concerns of corruptions stemming from his close ties with Kabia. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, even canceled a loan to DR because of Kadia underpriced purchases. Gurla attributed to low pricing to the lack of competition due to the country's instability. Number four, he's ultra-orthodox, ultra-orthodox. Gregson grew up in a secular family, but he began to show interest in the orthodox Jewish life as a teenager. And as 20, he became a moral servant and ended up in the Hadri, or the orthodox community. When not traveling in his mines in Africa, Gregson lives in Banabrak, an orthodox enclave near Tel Aviv, with his wife and 11 children. He uses his private jet to make sure he gets back at home in Israel for every Shabbat. He donates to many hearty charities. Gessler is also known as an alter, in the Orthodox community as a generous donor who focuses on the needs of yeshiva students and Hari family. He holds an open house, which you know ain't nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? He switched to a more organized, flanderized system. Right? Ain't nothing wrong with that supporting your people. So I'm, I'm not going to knock him for that. You know what I'm saying? But this guy, you know what I'm saying? He does a lot. Super billionaire, and it's and it been passed down from generation to generation. Anyway, man, you know, subscribe to the channel. Much love to the subscribers. You know what I'm saying, the business, and we are gonna keep on doing this. Follow the money. All right, peace.